right, you bunch of yahoos. Strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Toxic Masculinity. Here I am with my co-hoax, the great predator Don Fry, and yours truly, Dan to be severed. We're here to entertain, enlighten, offend, defend anybody and everybody. So put your man pants on, grab a cup of coffee or your beverage of your liking, and be ready to be infused with some manly masculinity. And you forgot the twin. You forgot oh, the Okay, yeah. there's, there's our, our feminine... Our, Feminine Our, aspect of the, the show. The feminine aspect of, of all this toxic masculinity, Quinn. <laughs> the, the lovely sit Quinn. Up, yes. Sit up, Quinn. Sit up, say hi. <laughs> and... Say hi. Mr. Fry, would you like to introduce our, our guest yes, sir. on this episode? Yes, sir. We got a local boy here tonight, people. And uh, he's a local boy from Tucson. And then he escaped and went to Yuma. And then he came back to Tucson. And then he uh, ran off and joined the circus. I mean, the uh, Navy. And <laughs> uh, became a Navy SEAL. And uh, protected our asses um, for years doing that. And now he's going to go to... Looking to go to uh, Washington, D.C. and our, protect our ass in a different way. Uh, hopefully, we have soon to be Congressman Eli Crane. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, fellas. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, getting to yeah, ha- ha- hang out and chat <laughs> with a couple uh, dudes you used to watch kick ass in the octagon uh, when you were a kid. Don't say child or kid. Come on. Well, I mean, I think I was like five or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding, oh man. Gosh. You know, we we got done uh, at a pride fight over there in Japan one night, and uh, we were all on the bus. You know, they had all the fighters on the buses go back to the hotel. And BJ Pence says, Don, I used to watch you when I was 12. Fuck you, <laughs> BJ. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the fact that you're still here, that's all that matters there, Don. The fact that you're still here, you're still upright, and you're still making your presence known. Oh, I'm, let me uh, jump ship for a second here. Um, I got news that BJ, uh, DJ's father passed away here recently, and... Uh, Sorry to hear that, boys. He was a good man. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Condolences go out yes, to the sir. family. All right. Well, way to, way to put a damper here, Don. Now, 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 that, damper right now that we've killed the show, you go ahead and <laughs> take over, Mr. Sutton. <laughs> okay. Well, Eli, I, I get, I, I, I get I, today is my first time ever meeting you, so literally I'll be student from like a, almost like a fan perspective. So Don says that you're born and raised here from the state of Arizona? Yes, sir. That's correct. I was born in Tucson. Uh, raised uh, about two years old when my dad uh, was going to pharmacy school here. Um, he was from him and my mom were both from Iowa. Actually, came out here to go to pharmacy school, and then uh, did your dad wrestle? I mean, because always say because no, Iowa is a state of cornfields of wrestlers. I okay. know, man. He actually played foot. He played football, and uh, and then uh, he brought us out here and uh, got a job in Yuma, Arizona. So we moved from Tucson to Yuma. He was a pharmacist. He's too smart to wrestle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he was a pharmacist and, uh, he did that in Yuma. And then I stayed there until I was about 18 years old. Uh Um, and then, uh, and then ended up coming over here to Tucson and, uh, going to the U of A and then, uh, was starting my senior year down here in school. And then, uh, nine 11 happened. I dropped out of school the next week and then joined the Navy and uh, that started my career in the service and spent the next like 13 years uh, serving. And then as we were getting out, we actually moved the family back here to Tucson. My, uh, my wife's family still lives here in Tucson. And so um, we, we moved our business from uh, San Diego uh, back here. I'm just curious, because okay, you said you had 13 years into uh, the <coughs> Navy at that time. Yes, sir. It's usually, what, 20 years that, that you could actually retire with full benefits at that point? Most people, yeah, the smarter people do 20, and then they retire, but nobody, I guess no, I, nobody's I, ever accused me of that. So, oh. Well, wait a second now. I understand you sold $20 million worth of your, uh, your company. Uh. Yeah, we, we've been bl- we've been really blessed. Uh, we, uh, we started a small business out of our one-car garage in San Diego, making 50-cal bottle openers, like – Kind of like the ones you have back there, Don, on the table. And uh, that was back when most people had never seen them. And, uh, you know, a couple years later after starting the business, I was still in the service when we started it. But uh, 
we went on that show, the Shark Tank. And uh, I love that program. I yeah, it no, it's a, it's a great show. And uh, the business uh, just blew up from there. And uh, we, we started hiring a lot. I, I had to hire a lot of folks here in Tucson. We went from like six employees to 35 employees in two weeks. And did, did you get a deal with your, uh, the Shark Tank? I yes, did. sir, okay. we did. We got a deal. Which, which one of the sharks? We got a deal with uh, Kevin O'Leary and Mark Cuban. Both of those guys. Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. He's actually a really cool guy. You know, it was interesting because you guys know being, you know, on TV enough yourselves that sometimes, you know, guys have on, on air personas. Yeah. But Kevin always kind of reminds me more of a, and for professionals, it's more of the, the heel type of character. Mr. Wonderful there. But to me, as I go, he's out there for a reason. He's, you know, he might do this character, but he's got to be a savvy businessman. Oh, he's extremely savvy, he's, you know, and, uh, and all the, all the companies I know that have gotten deals with him love him. He's he's a good man. He really cares about his company. So I just wish they would do more of where are they at now? Because you see people that are there and they see the deals every now and then they'll show a little flashback. But I wish they'd just do one or two episodes where they simply just show all these different people that have maybe not all, but but the ones that, that have got deals with various uh, sharks, whether it be one, two, or all of the sharks, just to see where they at now, because I think there's some great stories. I mean, I, you see more people that are foreigners that come to the United States that they're now on the program, and they're living the American dream to where they had nothing for yep. where they were. They could never even own that company, but now they're here in the United States, and they've turned themselves from rags to riches. Yeah, it's one thing I love about the show, you know, and it's another thing I love about the country. Right. You know, it is it. Uh, I I saw the stat like a while ago that a third of the millionaires produced in the United States every year are actually immigrants, and I just think that's <laughs> awesome. That if you come here with the right frame of mind and willing to work your ass off and sacrifice, you know, you can live the American dream. I love it. But don't you think? Okay, because I, I look at this way, <clears throat> most Americans simply take for granted all the privileges that we have. 100%. I mean, we're in this room. We have electricity that works. We have running water that comes out of our tap. We have functional sanitation restrooms and things of that nature. Which you've proven, thank God. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but the reality is, there's a lot of countries, they don't have water that they, they could drink. They don't have access to, to food and health care and the whole nine yards. And, and Americans just don't really realize how good we have it. There's, yeah. I think I always tell people that I, you know, having that privilege of being able to travel to so many different four countries, I know why people are coming to the United States. This is, as, as many times as I kind of beat up America, because I want people to wake up, but I beat up America because it's kind of going, there's a reason why everyone's coming here. It is truly the land of opportunity. 100%, you know, and um, that's one of the reasons that, uh, on 9-11, I decided to join the, the military and, um, you know, go serve and go fight for it because I know that freedom isn't free. I know that's cliche. I know we say it a lot, but it's true. Not lot, Most Americans, they don't understand that. And they, they don't realize that because there's just, I hate to say it, there's a lot of Americans that they're arrogant asses. Yeah. And yet, do they have any calluses on their hand? Do they have any dirt underneath their fingernails? Have they ever worked a hard day in their life? I mean, it's, uh, you know, have they ever served? I, I you... You said you were in college at the time, and you dropped, or, or yeah, you were in college. College, yeah. How, how far along were you in your program of study? I was a, just starting my senior year. Really, your senior yep. year? So, I mean, literally, that, that was your final year, and, and you dropped out. Yep. What, uh, what are, what's your feelings like about uh, today's youth? Um, do you think, do you think that upon high school graduation, do you think they should really just go to college? Or do you think they should take maybe a year or two off, go with the military, because other countries, it's mandatory. Right. They have to go in for, I think, two, a lot, a lot of countries. And then after that, sure, go out and, and go, to, uh, go to military, do or army, to go, go back and uh, do whatever you want to college, stuff like that. But uh, see, my, my two cents first, first, before I come right back to you, my two cents is most high school kids, they go out to college. And Bob or Dad's not there now. So now, without the supervision of Bob or Dad, they go crazy. Right. So now you got all kinds of more excessive drinking, partying, the whole nine yards, and usually Bob or Dad's flipping the bill for college. Right. And they, you know, they're not exactly applying themselves. So, I mean, I just, 
I just think that for one or two years, mature them. Teach them the fact that freedom is not free. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. And for me, I, I just don't like the fact that it's kind of sold as the end-all, be-all, destination, next step for everybody. Because college isn't for everybody. Oh, I totally agree. I, I know that there are certain jobs and careers where you have to have that college yep. degree. And, but however, I see, you know, a lot of these kids getting pipelined into something that was never really for them uh, anyway, and they end up in a mountain, mountain of debt. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's sad. And then, and then even many of them get that degree and whatever they get their sociology or whatever they get their degree in. Um, and then they get out and they can't, they can barely, you know, get a job, get a well-paying job, let alone pay off, now pay off all the, you know, the hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars of debt they have. And so that's what I, I wish that, you know, more kids understood that it's not the only way to go. There are many ways to, you know, skin the cat. And I also wish the institution of academia didn't push that on our kids. Like that's the only way. No, to- totally agree that, uh, that every, every high school kid thinks they have to go to college. It's me. It's like going, no, I, it's a, uh, you know, heavy children, I, I started to tell my kids, as, as I kind of smart up to a situation, like, this is not the way they should do it. It's like, upon high school graduation, go get a job for a year or two. Right. And real, realize how much you hate your boss, you hate your job. So now when you go to college, oh, you're going to apply yourself. It's, you're not going to be worried about all this party or all this, uh, this, that, and those other things. You'll be a little more specific what you're looking for. I think more, we need more people going into the trades as well because that's something that we're lacking. We need more plumbers and electricians and just people and, and, and all sorts of skilled labor type of situations. Well, right. somebody's going to hold the horses, right? Right. <laughs> well, and, and that's the other thing, too. I think that um, the narrative is is that if you go into the trade, you're not educated, so you're not smart. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think a lot of... Young men, young women want that label or that branding put upon them, even though in many cases you can actually make, you know, better money going into the trades. Um, and I think you you also can have a lot more stability because fewer and fewer people want those careers, but those you're always going to have uh, job stability in those careers because you're always going to need a plumber, right? You're always going to yeah. need an electrician. You're yeah. always going to need, you know, those, we had those one, things. Uh, just earlier that arrived here at yeah. uh, Mr. Fry's home. Yeah, so. buddy of mine, yeah. But, hell, uh, Rick Renzi, a buddy of mine, he was a congressman um, about a decade ago. And uh, we went to the 84 Olympics together in L.A. Anyways, back then, he called a plumber because one of his kids – shoved the toy down the toilet, you know, and the plumber came in and says, you know, just pulled it out and, you know, that'd be 75 bucks. He's what? And he says, yeah, 75 bucks walk through the door. He's put that damn thing back in the toilet. In. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's 20 years ago, 40 years ago. Shit. Right. Right. And, you know, people don't understand. And when I left, I left college, I, I went to horseshoeing school, you know, after, after I was a fireman in, I was a fireman in, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and then we couldn't afford to live there, so we left. And um, I took my 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 wife to my parents' house, and I went off to horseshoe, Oklahoma horseshoe in school, and uh, you know did their program, and uh, came back, and I made a lot more money shoeing horses, you know, and a lot of people who were teaching the school. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Like you said, you know. Trades, trade is not, not a shame to do a trade job. You know, it's actually a lot of pride in it. Yeah. And I also, yeah, I also wish that, you know, uh, more young people, because I'll admit when I was going, growing up and I thought I was too stupid to start a business because, you know, I never applied myself in school. I never really got good grades, but I wish that more and more kids understood that that was an op- option as well, because I think that uh, uh, just – you know, working for corporations, working for the government, working for myself, I think that's one of the most satisfactory careers that you can have is working for yourself. It's one of the hardest, but, you know, I think It that, is because uh, you wear all the hats. Yeah, <laughs> ex- exactly. And I think, too, if a lot more people tried to start their own business, um, you would have a lot more people that would be, you know, respectful of business owners, respectful when they walk in, you know, to a, to a right. restaurant and don't, you know, aren't throwing silverware in their purse or whatever, because you know that that stuff doesn't grow on trees. 
you know. Who, who came up with the idea though of, of making a fifty cal uh, into a, a bottle opener? Yeah, who came I, up I didn't come up with that idea. Matter of fact, um, I know you guys have traveled all over the world, but my little brother was a pilot in the Marine Corps. He flew helicopters, and uh, he went to the Philippines and brought me back a fifty cal bottle opener from the Philippines, <laughs> and. Uh, I thought it was one of the cool, coolest gifts I'd ever received. And so, but I never saw him in the States. And so I was like, you know, I think, I think we could make this thing better. And oh. so I started working on it and uh, made it, made it, made it a little bit better. And then, uh, asked my wife if she could help me sell them online. Cause she was selling stuff online uh-huh. and she did. And it started, it started to quickly build and build and build. And then it, you know, started blowing up and we were like, holy cow, man, people love these things. So we just kept at it. And then a couple of years later, we were on Shark Tank. And you sold twenty million dollars in one year, or no? The, the the highest year we've ever had was over five million. But we've I actually looked into it the other day, and I think we've done over twenty three million in sales um, since uh, 2000, uh, 2013. And you still have that product today? Yes, sir. We oh, do. Cool. Yep. It's called uh, BottleBreacher dot com. So it's it's really just a bunch of gifts, especially for you know primarily for men, but most of them are like, you know, big, large caliber rounds that can open your beer or a grenade that opens your beer, whiskey bullets. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great conversation pieces. <clears> stuff yeah, like ex- that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's like when you go to the c- complaint department, they've got that grenade that's just right there. Go, yeah, t- take a number. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, what what, uh, what brought you then to want to dabble into politics of all things? Because politics is a very <clears throat> ugly field. No, it, it is. I just love this country. Um, and uh, back then, when I joined the Navy, it, like I said, it was a week after 9-11. That's where the fight was. Yep. Um, today, the fight, I think, is in culture. And one of the verticals of culture is politics. And there's, you know, uh, just because of where I'm at in my life, you know, when you campaign uh, for Congress or whatever you're campaigning for, you don't get paid for it. So you have to have a little bit of financial stability to do it. Um, it has to be something that I think you're passionate about. So I, I'm definitely passionate about it. Um, and I also have a pretty solid, pretty strong family. My wife has been with me the entire time I've been, it was in the SEAL team. So she did three deployments, holding the fort down, keeping the, you know, watching the kids. Um, and so we have a pretty strong marriage and I think that that's a part of it as well. If, you know, if things were out of whack in my life, there's no way I'd be doing this, but I'm at a place in my life where I can do it. I think it's that important. I think uh, so many of our politicians have, you know, just sold us down the river because they don't have, the, they don't have the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have the courage to step up and do the right thing. And so, um, you know, looking at my, looking at myself in the mirror and I'm, I'm I got to ask myself, have I done everything I can to make sure that my kids and the next generations grow up with freedom and prosperity. And if I don't try and do this, the answer is no. And that's not something that I'm okay with. Yeah. Now, what about the, uh, there, there's a Navy SEAL, there's a congressman in Texas yep. at the eye patch. Yep. There's a, th- his name is Dan Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw. We were actually in the same task unit at SEAL Team 3. Were you? Yep. Good. Because he's um, kind of questionable now, is he? Yeah, you know, I, I think he's been upsetting some people lately, you know, with some of the positions, he, you know, he, some of the positions he's taken. And, you know, um, that's, you know, he, he can he gets to play this any way he wants to, just like everybody else. And, right. you know, I mean, I tell people all the time that just because you're a veteran doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to go astray or it doesn't mean you're not going to sell it out. But I will say this, that. If at one point in your life you were willing to die for it, it makes it harder to sell out. It right. sure as hell does. So um, I do like to see veterans running. I know there's at least 60 veterans running in this next ni- cycle. Yeah. Um, and there's, I think there's at least seven SEALs running. There's at least three to four Green Berets that I know of um, and, and plenty of others. And the reason I like that is, like I said, um, when you're willing to die for it, it does – you know, that means something to you and it, it is harder to, it is harder to sell out. But, you know, when I look back at and the history, possible. Yeah, 100%. When I look back at the history of our country after World War II, over 50% of Congress w- were veterans. Right. And I think that's one of the, re- one of the reasons we were in a better spot 
right. know, than we are today. So. Well, again, what do you think about, I'm going to throw just some random questions left and right here at you, but uh, how about term limitations on uh, different people in, in, in various offices? It, I know? think it I think it should be a thing. To me, I look at if, if the president can only serve two, two terms. Two. Yeah. So I don't think they'll ever, I don't think there will ever be, I don't think it'll ever happen because the people that have to vote on that are the ones, are the ones that <laughs> benefit from not having term limits. Oh, yeah. No, okay. When you see people like a Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. What, 50, 40, 50 years? I mean, yeah. she's, she's, she's 80 some years old now. Yep. yep. What does she know about the real world anymore? No, she no, lives in a gated community. Yep. And yet she wants to, you know, but, but that's, I, I can't say enough what, bad things. What you can, what you can do, because I'm big, I'm big on focusing on what I can control uh-huh. and not worrying as much about what I can. What I can control is myself. I've already signed a pledge saying, you know, that I support term limits and, and I'm not going to, I'm not, and that, that, that doesn't mean anything if my word isn't it, and my integrity isn't there. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want to do more than three to five terms anyway. To tell you the truth, I never wanted this job anyway. I, when I look at, first of all, living half the year in Washington, D.C., a place that I don't mind touring the place, but I don't want to live there. Right. Um, been there I, many times. I, I know exactly what you're okay, talking about. Okay, so so there's that, and then when I look at, you know, uh, what that what that job entails, you know, meetings all day long, getting drugged through the mud, having people, you know, trash your reputation, and then you know a lot of the things that they have to do, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like a glamorous, glorious, you know, wonderful life to me. It seems like a pain in the ass. Right. However, it's important it's because so much yeah. so much of how you know, what governs our lives and what we, what we can and can't do. And, um, like even right now, what's going on on Capitol Hill, we have 30, over $30 trillion in debt and they keep trying to run up the tab, run up the tab, run up the tab. And that affects us big time. It, it, it's destroying our dollar. It's Mm. destroying the, our buying power as consumers. And so if I can be in that room, if I can put myself through this, get elected and then be in that room when those, when the next stimulus package is coming up or the next spending bill is coming up, you know, and I can, and I can take a hard no vote on that. You know, that it's just one guy, it's just one vote, but out of 435, you know, votes, if you get enough people that say, Nope, we're not going to, we're not going to sell, we're not going to sell our grandkids out like that mm-hmm. because somebody's going to have to pay for that. That, 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 Sooner that's going to come. Yeah. Right? Someone's got to pay the pauper. You bet. Or we straight up go bankrupt with, which is probably more, more likely anyway, but it's just, um, it's just a disaster up there. And I think at the end of the day, the answer is sending more people with courage and character. I don't think it's though, though I know these things are important. Education's important. Intelligence is important. Experience. Those things are all important, but I, I don't think that's why we are where we're at. I just think that typically the people that want to get into politics, um, you know, want power and, you know, they want, they, they, they're doing it for a selfish reason. Yeah, exa- exactly. Or you're so, doing it for the good of the country. Yeah, and you know, honestly, this is also a really bad time in my life. You know, as you guys are both fathers, um, my kids are 14 and 10 years old. Yeah. This is not a good time no. for me to do this. No. This is, it, it, and, and so I feel torn it, as a dad, but I also believe that if not, an, we're, I feel like we're at a precipice, like a tipping point. And if we, if we don't reverse course quickly, I feel like it, it could completely just crash and burn. May, you know, maybe maybe there's folks out there that dis- disagree with that, but I just think that the United States of America, as great as it is, can only withstand so much corruption, so much debt, um, and, and and so much evil. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of that takes you know a lot of the epicenter of that is Washington D.C. Well, so. going back to Pelosi, you know, um, years ago. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, I saw once on the news, um, you know, that that train from San Francisco to L.A., a billion-dollar contract, which is over budget and behind schedule. Right. Once I saw Pelosi construction, you know, and then it was gone. It was off the air, you know. So, <laughs> how, how, yeah, how the hell does that get a billion dollars over budget, you know, yep. and – yeah, you know, she's just waxing her own ass, you know. I hate to say, but when you, see, when you see these politicians, they get into office, and they were only at 
this level of finances in their life. Yeah. And then what are a couple of terms later, they're way up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, it's, that was the difference with uh, true. President Trump. He came in as a billionaire, and he lost money right. in, in the four years, you know. Well, yeah. The, man, was the man wasn't taking a paycheck either. I think right. he was actually donating it to yeah, some cause was. or something like right. that. Right, he was. Yeah. So, I mean, I look he at the, solid. Well, do, you, do you think Biden is uh, taking a salary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his, <laughs> son, his son is uh, taking a salary. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and that, that just goes back to what I was saying about character. And, you know, it's like, that's, that's, to me, that's the big issue. It's character. I mean, you know. What, you what you said earlier, though, I actually, kid, I, I still think that there's going to be more qualifications for these individuals that are, that are running for office. I like the fact that you're, you've got a military background. Yeah. You, you, okay. You've actually built an old company yourself. I, I, you heard me say before, I want more of these politicians to have a business background so they understand this is the United States. It is still a business. We can't be in debt like this. Sooner or later, someone's got to pay the piper right now. When you've got people that keep racking up this bill, it's got to be paid. Do it. They're, they're not doing any true justice to the United States and to his people. Why? Well, the give. There's no, there is no such word as free. Right. Everything will cost you something. Yep. Something that uh, my parents taught me. And, um, but back to your point, it's fiscal responsibility. Yeah. And that's, to, I agree with you. I think that if we had more business owners um, in, you know, uh, as elected officials, it would be different because as a business owner, you can't just uh, print money. Right. You can't print more money. You have to make, you have to make money spend, you know, spend what you have. And sometimes you, sometimes you have to borrow money, but you got to pay it back. And that type of fiscal Fiscal in, in, responsibility. In, 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 real world, in, in the real world, yes. And using words like responsibility when other people are thinking, no, no, we, we continue to spend it, you know, we'll just let it go out to somebody else. Yep. That's, uh, and pass on that kind of debt to the next generation, next generation. That's 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 not fair. Someone along the lines has got to do the right things. And again, I, I'm not just saying that uh, the swamp is, is uh, being. I think there's there's a lot more corrupt people in there than what what, what meets the eye, and uh, we need more good people that are doing the right thing. So I, I I like the fact that you're military because again, as you said before, you understand, you know what freedom means, and uh, to, to know that uh, people you once knew, you know they they paid the ultimate price with their life. Yeah, you know, um, this is what I tell people because I I look at this through the lens of a a voter and a citizen first, not you know not a candidate first. And what I say is, hey, this is what I think we should all be looking for right now when our country is in trouble. Look look at candidates that have a lineage and a history of doing the right thing when they felt like it might cost them. That's what you want because um, it, it's easy to do the right thing when you think you're going to come out on top. Right. And you think it might might break the other way and it, it's it's not going to work out for you that's when you know you re- that's when you really find out what somebody's character is and so when you're looking at these candidates out there hey if they went to harvard that's fantastic but you know show me a time in your life where you did the right thing knowing that there was a good chance that it might cost you if you can show me a history and a lineage of that you got my vote all day long i really don't care as much what school what ivy league school you graduated exactly. from and so I think I think that a part of it is, you know, the people that we send, but a part of it too is as voters educating ourselves and looking for the right things. Yeah, somebody's be uh, willing to take the opportunity to take the chance to fail. Yeah, you know, like like what you're saying. Yeah, you know, it could go the good or bad, but you know, if you don't take the chance to fail at something, you know, what the hell are you? When are you showing us? Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys both did that. Like, I watched both of you guys get in the octagon. What did, what did, what did what'd that feel like? You know, not only knowing that you could fail, but knowing that you could get... Fail in front of everybody. Fail in front of everybody. <laughs> get, get pretty beat up, pretty hurt, yeah. you know? Yeah, it didn't, didn't feel good all the time. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Yeah, I 
I still remember watching that fight of you uh, with that big Asian dude with the the Ta- blonde, Ta- blonde, Ta- blonde, Ta- blonde Ta- hair Ta- dude. Right. Oh, that's look at this. Me, the most viewed just, match in uh, combat history. I was just like, what the hell is going on here? This is fantastic. <laughs> but I told this story before a number of times that I, I did not watch that match until like a couple weeks later. And I'm seeing this. I'm thinking I finally called Don up. I go, Don, what was going through your mind <laughs> other than Takiyama's fist at the time? Because they were doing like this. It was like a game of, uh, like a game of chicken. Right. They literally, they got to the point that they're holding each other's head with a collar tie and are punching each other's face. It's kind of going, I'm punching in the face, you son of a bitch. Are you going to give up? And Don's like going, no, I'm going to keep punching you in the face until you give up, you son of a bitch. I'm thinking, yeah. who won? Well, the, 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 the audience won because they witnessed something they will never, ever see again because that was simply incredible. Yeah, no, we, I definitely won on that one because I got to watch it, and I still can go watch it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that one will go down in, in, you know, in history. Yeah, that guy, God bless him, he um, severed his spinal cord in a pro wrestling match. Did he? Yeah. and Doing one of the most simplistic moves that you could ever think of. It just it surprised me. But uh, you, it just goes to show you that professional wrestling, Sure, it's it, it, it's like a play. It, it's there's a there's a uh, it's acting. It's uh, these are stunt men, stunt women, but uh, the risk of injury is always going to be there because they are def- they're doing such incredible athletic maneuvers, yeah. you know, all the time. And yeah. if they go wrong, because something goes wrong, did he, people d- get did he hurt. die? Then? No, so sir. He's just he's just, just quad- quadriplegic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that bless yeah, that's him. Awesome. He's a great guy. Was he? Yeah. Did yeah. you get a did you get a talk to him after that fight? Uh yes, sir. Got to see him after the fight. We um yeah, at the the uh arena, you know, the stadium. Uh shit. It's probably what about a seventy thousand seat uh no, I'm a liar. Oh, uh, I think it's only a fifty thousand seat arena. And uh so there's forty some thousand, you know, because well, not even 50,000 seat because they got the floor. Um, it was sold out, you know, 48,000 people. And then, you know, there's different levels on this arena. And so downstairs uh, is where all the locker rooms and the doctors and all that. So we go walking. Uh, we're walking down the hallway uh, to get to the bus. And he comes out of the, his locker room. He's like, holy shit, <laughs> you know. And he's like, Don son, I'm very sorry. And I said, for what? And he said, for not giving you a better fight. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you going to kill me. Right. <laughs> you know? That's great. That's the first yeah. time I ever heard that one. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. He, he became a national hero, and he deserved it. You know, yeah. He deserved no, that, it. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah they, that, they, they made him. He was, became the world champion of the top three pro wrestling uh, organizations over there, you know? That, how cool would that have been if you could have just had a beer with them afterward? <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, there was a party afterwards, you know. Okay. They, 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 all the fighters have to go to the party. Okay. You know, because they, they, they sell a ticket to the party, you know. Uh, gotcha. So that's gotcha. more money for the for the organization. The UFC used to do the exact same thing to where uh, people would go to the – we always we used to call it the after, far, uh, the after party, but, but it uh, could be like a black tie, but we always refer to it as the black eye. Affair because <laughs> most of the guys that showed up they had a they had a shine or two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, hey, awesome. back when we were fighting, you know, it was a joke. Is uh, you'd either go to the after party or you go to the hospital. Yeah. And also, we could have went to could have went to jail because. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, yeah. When they were, when McCain the was yeah, McCain was trying to put the boots to it. it. So I'm all for uh, term limitations and uh, put a cap on how much each candidate can spend so it's fair across the board because when, when you see millions and millions of dollars going for each candidate yeah to to shovel no just hundred thousand dollars that's it right and you got your your, your 10 commercials that's it right right if you're a piece <laughs> of shit you're just a piece yeah. of shit yeah. i don't care if you want to run the, the next hundred commercials that yeah. shows you what i really what i really despise and as far as i know i i think we have former president obama to thank for this is there was a point in time when newspapers, radio, our media, they had to do fact-checking. If you reported something incorrectly, you and your company is now held liable. 
to where now you have people that out and out just blatantly lie. Yeah. And there's no accountability for them lying. What? Who voted on this one? Who, who who ran this one through? I mean, again, was this all Obama's doing? That's I mean, I simply to, was told if this was this happened underneath Obama's uh, reign. Yeah, I'm not I'm not honestly sure about that, but I do be, I do know that so much of the quote unquote news is just straight up propaganda. But I will tell you this: um, over the last couple of years, you had that one. You had that one thing go down with Nick Sandman, where where it was at that rally, and he was a you know he was accused by the media of you know disrespecting uh, I think it was that Indian guy or whatever, and they were lying about it, and he ended oh, up yeah. getting a settlement of like I think it was like over two hundred million dollars, and then now you got Kyle Rittenhouse who has just hired the same lawyers that he had, and so that's good to see. I like seeing people that I like seeing these corporations that have become fake news or propaganda machines mm-hmm. actually get hammered for, you know, the, the yeah, the they've been untouchable spreading. for so long. Right. Right. You know, it's good. To, it's good to see that for sure. Absolutely. Will they change their ways? I doubt it. Yeah. But well, we'll they, see. as long as people keep buying their damn paper, you know, or buying the commercials, you know, well, their ratings are in the tank. Their ratings are like CNN's ratings are in the tank. And uh, but they should be. They're garbage. Yeah. Um, a lot of people's ratings are in the tank. And I, th- I think that's one of the cool things about having a bunch of, you know, media like this, even, you know, a, a podcast where people just realize that, hey, I can't get the truth over there anymore because they have no more integrity. But, you know, I'll go listen to these 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 guys. These clowns. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. We knew you were going to say it. I saw it. I heard you, I heard you formulating the word. Uh, uh, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch my P's and Q's around a couple of UFC <laughs> legends, you know. Uh, yeah, you gotta respect your elders. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> watch it, there, Dad. Watch it. Watch it. Well, his grandfather's owning that when you know he went to, he was four classes behind you. <laughs> right. So I mean, Eli, you're 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 running on the uh, conservative Republican uh, format. That, yes, sir. Uh, okay, yes, sir. I'm an America first candidate. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, I love this country, man. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, definitely big on securing the border. Um, my, my number one thing though, my number one thing is definitely election integrity. I think that that, when I look at it, I triage it like what's going to kill us first. I think if we don't get our elections, uh, tightened up, that's, you know, it's going to kill us really quickly because at the end of the day, what this really has always been about is who has the power. Right. Is it is it the political elites or is it we the people? You know, and if if we don't have if we don't and honestly, it's not even about whether my guy wins or not. It's about all of us believing that our elections are uh, tightly run, secure, and at the end of the day, when an election is final, we can both walk away, you know, Democrat, Republican, Independent, and say, okay, that that was. That's who won, yeah. but right now it's it's, honest, it's, it's, true it's election, not right. it's not that way, and that's that's a problem. Oh, during during, during the election process with uh, you know with Biden and Trump, I drove through probably thirty different states doing different things. I saw Trump posters, Trump signs, Trump flags. You David, I see all this stuff. I think I see two Biden Harris yard signs. Yeah, nobody nobody was fanatic. Nobody was fanatical about Biden. I mean, the guy didn't know where he was half the time. Um, you know, he was a constant gaffe machine, constantly saying things that didn't make any sense at all. He campaigned out of his basement. It was almost like there was no sense of urgency. And, you know, it's really hard for me to believe, because I remember when Obama ran. I was never an Obama fan, but I will tell you this. I can remember people being excited about him. I can remember that. And um, it's really, it's just really hard to believe with everything that we saw go down on during the election and even before the election, knowing that watching uh, folks in the media say, hey, stay away from the elections, they can be super spreader events. Um, just knowing that there were going to be more, um, you know, uh, not absentee ballots, but more uh, mail in ballots in our elections than there ever had been before. You know, that's, that is prime that is 
prime time for fraud and everybody knows it. There's a lot of countries around the world that don't even allow that um, because of just all the, you know, potential for fraud it creates. And so, um, well, like Afghanistan, you know, they get an ink, they get ink thumbprint, you know, I mean, how come we're not doing that? Yeah. Well, I, they're ahead of us. I think there's a lot of people that don't want secure elections. I yeah, think there's yeah. a lot of people that want our elections to be wide open to create the opportunity for fraud. Right. And honestly, guys, it's when I look at it, even, even most Democrats, they don't, uh, most Democrats, I would say, aren't radical leftists. They're not radical leftists. You know, we may disagree on, you know, plenty of things, but I don't think even most of them want socialism, right? And that's where this radical leftist party is going. Right. They're going towards socialism. Well, and, they're already there. Oh, yeah, they, <laughs> they are. Well, they're driving the rest of us there. And, and so I just don't think that, you know, I don't think that they can be transparent, you know, really about what their platform is. And I don't think that, I don't think that most of them, and I'm talking about radicals here. I'm talking about the minority, but they happen to be driving the party. I don't think they believe they can win a straight up election because they know that the majority of the country is not, right. they're not aligned with their platform. Well, look at the shit that's going on now with the uh, grocery stores being half empty, you know, uh, the supply chain being worn out. That's, that's socialism and communism, people. I mean, if, if you're happy, you know, and in fashion, when you look at the price of uh, food and uh, yeah, goods, gasoline, so it's skyrocketed. Yes, pack your shit and go somewhere else because I don't want it in my country. I, no, I don't. It. I know I don't want it. I don't want it here e either. And uh, you know, inflation—that's something that we're definitely going to have to deal with sooner or later. I mean, if you could just print your way, if you could just print your way out of debt, if you could print your way towards prosperity, every com country in the world would do it. And that's what our government is acting like right now. Um, and it's just, it's, it's really unfortunate because at the end of the day, you know, the little guy is the one that pays the most, the little guy that lives paycheck to paycheck that shows up at the gas pump or goes to buy a gallon of milk. That's who pays the most. And it's just, it's unfortunate to watch so many, um, you know, politicians and uh, what I would call elites who it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter if gas doubles in price, they're so wealthy, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're not driving a car in the first place. They're being chauffeured around. E exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They're not. They're not. They got an expense account. You know. I bet when you you get there to DC, you'll find out you don't have any expenses. You know, your your housing is going to be paid for. Your meals will be paid for. You know, uh, your fuel will be paid for because you know, you have a chauffeur. You'll, you know, you'll be wide to die by special interest groups. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, if 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 that's true. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be perks, but right. um, I, I'm they're my taking my friend Don Fry to dinner better be paid for. Too, you know? <laughs> I'm going to make sure take this By guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to uh, on on their on their on their dime. I'm going to take this guy, and y you can bring this old old fellow with I you too. We'll, we we'll go out for man. a nice steak dinner, dude. <laughs> but because uh, uh, you know if if you're making the rules. You're going to make the rules to benefit you, you know, yeah. and that's why, yeah, that's, that's why there's it's, no, it's, you, I, you know, it's unfortunately it's human nature. So if you can, right. if you can get, you know, if you can get, start flooding the zone with men and women with integrity and character, which is what I keep coming back to. If you can get more, more of us in there, it's just going to be better. It's going to be better. It doesn't mean that I don't think that any government's ever going to usher in some utopia just because we're all I, I believe we're all sinners and we're all screwed right. up anyway. Um, but I, I do think, you know, um, I'm, I'm really hopeful that more and more people that love this country um, were willing to die for it at some point, you know, or realize what's going on and are willing to, uh, you know, go serve again. I didn't realize what you said earlier, all the different former military personnel that are actually going into uh, seeking out different uh, elected type of offices. I think that's fantastic because, again, you have if you served, whether, whether it be for a four-year or, or, or more type of uh, time frame, you are there. You went through boot camp. I mean, I, again, I, I look at that. Our generations, uh, different generations of uh People in the United States, they don't have any, uh, they're not really squared away in I, life. 
Right. And I, I, I think that, again, that's what I said before, where I think the <laughs> high school graduates should go into military for at least a minimum of two years before going go and not doing anything else. Because for, for two years, let somebody really yell at you, right. make you make your bed, right. and uh, clean up. Well, they Otherwise, don't do that anymore, but, Dan. But there's re- they but, get stress cards, right? Oh, yeah, it, it's it, a whole it, lot it, fucking it, stress it, cards. So my mom or dad is called a timeout. No. You get a timeout. No, when you're in basic training, if you're upset because the the t- DI is yelling at you, you can hold a stress card and he's going to back off, right? I've heard that. Okay. I've never, I've never, I, I, witched, I've never heard of this, right but I, I've heard it. Is this true? Yeah. Yes. I've yes. heard it. I've heard They've it. They've changed it. They've changed basic training so much. And, and meanwhile, and this is where it gets scary, guys. Meanwhile... The Chinese, the Russians, they're not doing any of that crap. They're getting tougher, yeah. And and I don't know if you guys saw the story this morning, but I was going through my, you know, news feed this morning. I saw that uh, one of the top Iranian generals was at a uh, Soleimani uh, Remembrance Day. (laughs) Soleimani was, I think that, I think that was his name. The the the, the Trump, the guy that whacked, yeah. he was in <laughs> the chief of like the Cuds Force or whatever. Yeah, and he, uh, President Trump, um, k- killed him, as yeah. you know, killed okay. him overseas. And so he, he, this top Iranian general, just said at the rally that we are going to strike the U.S. so hard within the within the U.S. that they'll never forget, you know, this, you know, the you know the revenge that we're about to f- inflict on him. He said it publicly, and it's like. After watching what happened with our pull out of Afghanistan, oh, God. knowing that we don't have a southern border, knowing that the Democratic Party has been trying to defund the police, watching Merrick Garland, who's the head of our Department of Justice, say that parents are domestic terrorists for showing up to school board meetings right. and saying that, you know, getting fired up because they don't want their kids to be taught critical race theory right. and all the other crap that goes on in academia. How, do you guys have any faith that we're going to be able to stop that attack? From no, coming, I don't. No. no, I mean, how many people always slipped across that border to where, when, when it comes, yeah, when it comes time to launch that uh, uh, attack, it eternally it here in the United States, it will happen. Oh, I, I totally agree. Well, with fuck, four saying. years ago, they picked up a couple of uh, Middle Eastern guys down there in um, Patagonia. You know, it actually happens all. It happens all the time. And right. here's the thing: those Fair are roads, just the guys yeah. that get. Those get are just caught. the guys that get picked up. Yeah. Exactly. If you go talk to any of the, you know, you know, border patrol guys, they'll tell you they only get a percentage of the folks that come yes. through. Yeah, they they raid they raid a little black camp and they'll fight prayer rugs, you know. Yep. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it's no, it's it's stuff that and this is the thing about so much this is the thing about so much freedom and prosperity that we've had here is that yeah, you know, as, a, as athletes, you guys and fighters, you guys understand this probably better than most. But if, if you're on living on easy street all the time, if you're, if you're never getting in there sparring, getting your tail whooped, you know, never dealing with adversity when you, you know, you're not going to be ready. You know, it, you're not going to be ready when the time is, is, you know, shit it, when, when shit hits the fan. And I've, I've, that's one of the things that bothers me so much about this generation and Americans and even my friends. It's that a lot, a lot of folks, and they're just good people wanting to live their lives, but we, we have it so good and we're so complacent. Right. We think that it could, nothing could ever happen to it. And that's not the case. No, it's like I mean, read a damn, <laughs> read a damn history book, yeah. read a history book. Every, you know, every great empire, you know, not everyone, but most of them end up collapsing from within because mm-hmm. of their own stupidity, their own greed, their own corruption, and that's yep. what you're seeing going on here. Right. So. Well, again, uh, yeah, you have to uh, take a little bit of great assault, the, the educational system inside the United States. I mean, when you look at what is being taught, yeah, I, I have a do, do I, I started off in construction engineering at Arizona State for the first couple of years, then I switched over to College of, of uh, Technology. Basically, I'm a shop teacher. Or right. is a glorified teacher. I've done a lot of substituting at all kinds of schools. I am shocked what is being taught. But when you look at something, again, because I, I get brought a lot of time as being the, the physical education. I don't know why I'm labeled <laughs> as a PE teacher right there, but, right. but I've done a lot of physical education. Substitute, and I am shocked what is being left for me to do. I'm thinking, this is the, even a physical activity. And like the first time I walk into the, the schools, I don't know. I, I walk into a gym. There's a couple other classes taking place. I don't know who's all my students. I, I pull up my whistle, hit a couple of blasts. I'm like, I am, uh, you know, 
I'm a substitute teacher, dad's over here right now, and I'm here for Mr. Smith or whoever, and, and I'm like, if you're part of Mr. Smith's class, get your get your little pork chop bodies over here, <laughs> and I'm like, and I see people that are straggling, I'm like, and I blast a couple more times, I go, chop, chop, my little pork chops, I said, today, boom, it's like going, and they're like going, and, and then literally then the teacher's like, there's this, the other teachers are watching me, like going, afterwards, they're all done, because... It was the, probably the, the, the most activity I've ever seen ever out of a class. Right. And, uh, and they're like going, how'd you do that? I go, well, the difference is here, I'm a sub. You need this job, and there's a possibility you could get fired. Right. I, I'm not. Right. I'm not scared at all. They, they're paying me for my day because who else is going to babysit these little turds? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? It doesn't hurt that he's like, damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dan yeah, but Severin, again, I was, but, former but, UFC like, yeah, legend, I, dude. I, I, didn't have I the, mean, that doesn't I factor that into stuff it going there for me. Can you imagine having this guy show up to your class? Dude, I'd probably Lewis? piss myself. <laughs> I know. I'd be like, do they ever? Do they ever recognize? Do they ever well, recognize I mean, you but, or but, say? But hey, that was were you a, U, were but, you a but, UFC but, guy? Well, I mean, when I started doing that, I mean, it was uh, when I was I, I was still a substitute teacher when I was actually starting to participate. Okay. So like, I, like the very first time I ever did my very first sub, I kept thinking, you know what happened when you had your first sub? Yeah. And then you know, you, you, what are you going to do that day? Not nah, that. Right, It'll right. be like read this, this, these few pages, answer this. That, that's what you're going to do. Right. So. I got out of the classroom early. I wrote my name up on the chalkboard, Mr. Sever. That's all I put. So I, I just sat there and I'm waiting for it as the class is filing in. I've seen all the young bucks that come in there, they're high fiving each other, stuff like that, doing they are gonna do a daily squat today. Right. So as soon as the second bell bell rings, I slowly start to get up. I go, Morning class. I'm your substitute teacher, Mr. Severed. I said, if you have a hard time pronouncing Severed, you call me Mr. S or Coach, because I've been a coach most of my life. If you want to know more about me, you simply could go to a day. I went to Chuck Board. You go to my website, thebeast.com. <laughs> <laughs> right. Every high school has got a, uh, uh, a little uh, computer lab. Yeah. They're like, who's this guy? He's a UFC fighter. He's yeah. a professional wrestler. He's an average wrestler. He's like this, that. And they, like, as a day, by, by, by lunch time, it's all over the school. Yeah. And the first. There the first go. brave soul, like a after, you know, what they have to do classes, he finally raises his hand. And he's like, uh, you know, Mr. Sanford, uh, you're not allowed to lay hands upon us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, going, I'm like, au contraire. Right. There will be repercussions if I should lay hands upon you. So rest assured, if I should lay hands upon you, I'll make it worth my while. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. Are you feeling lucky? You know, yeah. you go with the Clint Eastwood line there at that best, point. Best time. behaved class all year, Don. It, but, yeah. but, but at the same token, I understand from their perspective because going to college, yeah. I have had some good, well, high school, college, I have I've had some good teachers and I've had some oh terrible teachers. They should have never they should have been working at the local mortuary because you know yeah. no one's gonna complain about them there. Right. But I tried to learn from the good teachers. So yeah. as a sub, it, it was always read this, answer these questions. So I'm like going, No, we're going to we're gonna either succeed or fail as a group. So right. go right down the line. You read the first paragraph, second paragraph, all the way down, and come right out of that. So right up there, I make a check mark. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, this, 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 this cat can't read. Make a little check mark right here so that, you know, when, when it's all done, it's kind of like going like, you know, Jimmy, Tom, and I, I need to see you three. Then I, then I have a quick little heart to heart. You need to learn to read. Yeah. Reading will open up the world to you. I go, so, so you can understand a lot of other things. But then you're going to realize I've got the answer key there, too. Right. So, like, the first time that we're, we're doing, like, uh, you know, answer these questions, I basically, uh, who, you know, whatever, I, I said, I asked them a question, and then, uh, you know, one of the kids gave the correct answer. I go, you're wrong. It was this. And literally, they're all dumbfounded. They're, all, they're all looking at each other. I go, what's wrong? And they're like, they, did, they didn't know what to do. And they're like, go, and then finally, I'm like, well, what's wrong? You, you seem like you, you don't agree. And then finally, one get one brave soul. They're like, going, well, you're wrong. Well, why am I wrong? And, and then they gave me the restaurant. I go, guess what? You're correct. It's okay to disagree with someone. Disagree with someone with some facts, some figures, some information behind it. And you at your young age, a lot of time, all you do is like, you're wrong because 
you're stupid and you're ugly. You know, I mean, there's, there's no rationale or stuff like that. Democrat. There, <laughs> but so like, no, that's a you're a racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're a racist. racist. So I was I was big about they simply knew that when I came in, like they actually they're, they're excited when I came in because they know I came on because Mr. Sam's here today. So this guy going, well, how is he going to trip us up today? This guy going, they had to use their mind for the first time ever. They, they like to have my class down. The next, the, the one hour class, fly right by. That's awesome. Yeah. But that's the way how to teach. Yeah. That's all. Don, are you a cat guy, man? Uh, yeah, I like kinda, cats. What kind of cat you got there, bud? Old. <laughs> 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 this, this is Sandy. She's about 16, 17 years old Does now. she go outside? No. No. You could see that the dog, dog between his dog Quinn and his cat Sandy here. Right <laughs> right. Now, yeah. There's there's two big hawks that live um, over in that big tree over there, yeah. and sometimes they hang out in the tree right here, the two trees right here yeah. in my front door. And then there's a big old uh, antenna over there, so they circulate, you know, around there. And then when the hawks go to bed at night, a couple a big old owl. Yep. Takes the perch up on that antenna. Yeah. So, yeah, she, we've lost a lot of cats living here. Really? You know, yeah. yeah. But they had a great life until that happened, you know. Right. I mean, right. Most of the time you go down the pound, oh, we won't want to let you take a cat because you live out there. Well, yeah, but what the fuck? They get, they, we're going to have a fun life, you know. Yeah. But better in life than they're going to have here in the pound. That's for sure. You know, it might be short, but it would be fun. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's, it's like... People ask me, you know, hey, you're kind of banged up, you know. I mean, would you do it again? Hell yeah, I'd do it again. Right. I had a fun time. You know? what's, that, what's that quote? All, all men die, some men never live, right? Right. There Absolutely. You go. There you go. Absolutely. But, man, I'll tell you what, I heard you um, uh, on what, KNST? Garrett Lewis, man. Garrett Lewis. Garrett Lewis. Yeah. Man, you charged me up that day. I was ready to run to the Run through the wall. There you and go. You, That's what we need, you man. You had me charged. I was going to go down there and put my name down as a candidate down, <laughs> there, down there in southern Arizona. We'd be in a better spot. We'd be in a better <laughs> spot if this guy was running, man. No, I, and that's honestly what it's about to me. Like, um, I know I'm not the greatest candidate of all time. You but, like but, you know, it's like um, we need, I think, so many good men and women they don't because they don't want to put themselves through the ringer. Right. They and have their reputations gone after, and that you know just get into a nasty world. We don't. I don't have up, to worry about that. My reputation's already shit. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know we we don't get good we don't get good people and good candidates, and uh, it's it's un, it's unfortunate. But again, I look at this as a voter, and even though it would make it more difficult, I actually wish in many ways that my race had. 10 solid candidates in it because that means that at the end of the day the people win we yeah. the people win because we get actual choice but how many candidates right now I mean, uh, there's probably i think they're like there's like four or five i would say that there's i would say there's three serious candidates on the republican side i would say that there's yeah two to three serious candidates some people would say there's two serious candidates it i guess it just comes down to your perspective but and then you have a democrat named Tom O'Halloran, he's the guy that holds the seat, and he's held it for three terms. So we're trying to toss him out because he's voting with Pelosi 98% of the time. Right. And, you know, he, you know, that's... That's pathetic. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's the party of open borders. It's the party of inflation. It's the, the party, heroin use it's and the, needles. It's the party <laughs> of... Again, I always say, I wish Pelosi, I wish uh, this other guy, I, I wish... Their home backed right up to that border. I I, I guarantee you, if, if they, they would not be all for any any of this, one hundred one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But because they're they're away and uh, again, if as much as Pelosi doesn't want to have you know the wall built stuff like that, why does she have a gate that around her estate? Yeah, Rule, rules for thee, but not for me. That's that's the elitist mentality, and you know they're not really looking out for the betterment of the country or for the people they're supposed to represent, but. It's it's all self interest and it's right. it's it's unfortunate, which again goes back to character. You know, if you don't have character, if you don't have a lineage and a history of doing the right thing, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna show up there and figure out how to do it. You're gonna fall back on what you know, and you're gonna be as crooked and corrupt as the rest of them. And so, um, you know, that's what this is about, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, do you do you worry about yourself? 
falling into that category getting up there. You know what, Don? I really don't, man. And and I say that as a guy who will admit to you, man. My, you know, I'm I'm far from perfect. Far, far from perfect. I've said and done things that I'm not proud of. I've made oh, a lot of mistakes. Way, yeah. I've failed at a lot of things, but I'm really not because I'm 42 years old. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot, and I know that I'm a I'm a Christian. My faith is really important to me, and I know right. that this life, this world, isn't about me. Right. And knowing when you start from a foundation like that and a baseline like that, it makes it really easy to give others the credit and sometimes, you know, just try and serve other people and, and better other people. And, and, and that's what I'm really going into. And so I think about my legacy a lot. I don't, I don't know if how much you guys end up, you know, thinking about your legacy, but I like to think about my funeral. I like to think about who's going to show up, who's not, what's going to be said about me. What's my legacy going to be. And if, you know, whether I, it, I don't really care if I, if I, if I go down or, my, you know, have a ton of money, but I really want people to say about me at the end of my life that Eli was a good dude. He loved this country. He loved people. Um, and he tried to encourage and better, you know, better other people. And because that, those are my goals, um, you know, and just fighting for this country. I love that, you know, had to be fought for so we could be here today. Um, I'm really not too worried about it, man, because first of all, I don't want to be there necessarily in the first place. Um, secondly, I've already, you know, as a, as an entrepreneur, I've already, you know, had, I've already experienced a little bit of title. I've already experienced a little bit of money. And I know that those things don't bring you happiness or fulfillment anyway. Right. You know, I mean, and I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I think that making money is a bad thing. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think when it comes down to mi- a lot of people demonize people that have been successful. And I think that money doesn't change who you are. It just amplifies who you already were. It exposes you. If, if you were a good human being and a generous human being and you come into money, that just means you're going to give more money. If you were a turd and you were broke and then you come into money, you're just going to be a more flamboyant turd who, who you know, yeah. and I, th- I see that all the time with, you know, celebrities and athletes and, but I also see people, you know, some of the best people I know are some of the wealthiest people I know, and they give and they give and they give and they give. And it's like, so I'm not, I'm not super worried about it just because I know what I, I know what motivates me. You know what I mean? And uh, so I'm not super worried about it, but it is something I do think about. Cause I, I you know, I, like I said, I'm flesh and blood, you know, I, I'm, I've done, I've done stupid stuff. Um, and, uh, it's something that I think that we all, we, we all need to be our biggest critic and we all need to definitely watch out for, um, getting tripped up by right. foolishness, right. you know, where can people go? I guess to uh, find out more about your campaign and uh, to, uh, know more about, uh, especially, uh, uh, Arizona yeah. Uh, natives. Uh, yeah. If, if they want to go check out, uh, Eli for Arizona.com. That's our website. If you guys want to find me on social media, it's just Eli crane underscore CEO. So I'm also a brand ambassador for six hour firearms. So I love shooting. I love, you know, uh, getting out and, uh, well, you live you in a r- the right state playing, you know, yeah. shooting around a little bit. So I, I'd, I'd had my daughter out a couple weeks ago. We were shooting my, uh, my six, five, uh, cross. Sig has a new, uh, they call it the cross. It's a hunting rifle uh, slash precision rifle. Yeah. If we, if I was a sniper in the SEAL teams, if we would have had that rifle, I would have carried it totally because really? it's super lightweight, doesn't recoil a ton. Like a it's, Creedmoor, it's, six, five, yeah, Creedmoor. yes, sir. It's got a modular adjustable buttstock. It's a phenomenal weapon, and she was, sh- you know, shooting, you know, targets um, and just, you know, having a good time. But, but yeah, I like that job. That's a cool, cool gig. Do you have uh, like just one daughter, or do you have other children? I have two. I have a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old. Okay. Yep. He said that earlier, if you were listening. <laughs> well, excuse me, yeah, Mr. Right. Fry. Right. You know, your, your memory. Your memory. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. I remember that one, Severin. You guys, hey. part of the set has to be like a small octagon when these two get out of hand. They just go and work it out, you know. Yeah. Big plastic glove. <laughs> right. <laughs> Big sumo suits. You know? there you go. It's not bad. We can't wear trunks anymore. We have to wear the pads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Ooh, yeah. Now I tell you what, though, man, I was so fired up when I heard you that that day, man. I, was, I think you're an amazing speaker. Really Thank you, do. brother. I well, it was cool because he called into the studio, and uh, and they hung uh, up on R- me. Ryan. 
<laughs> Ryan, Ryan kind of runs the show for Garrett, and he's like, hey, Don Fry called. and he, he, he wanted me to give you his number. I was like, Don Fry? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, I know, I know that guy. I used to watch him all the time. And uh, I was like, give, give me his number. So he gave me his number. He checked it a couple times. And so I text this guy and then never hear anything from him. And then, I don't know, maybe a but month. Don's not exactly technology right. savvy. Uh, social media stuff. Uh, he's not real social. Yeah. Then like a month and a half later, he, he shows up. I'm speaking down at the fire truck brewing company down the road. And he shows up. And I'm like, holy, holy, holy shit, dude. It's Don Fry, man. And he had uh, Quinn with him. I got to talk to this guy, man. So but he picks my wallet. You know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, Navy SEAL. <laughs> right. Navy SEAL pickpocket. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> perfect, perfect fan. You know? <laughs> nah, but... That, that's just cool, man. And, and I think one of the coolest thing is that you're still engaged because, you know, I, I realize that, man, it's like at some point it gets, it gets easy to quit fighting. It gets easy to just tune out, okay. you know, you get tired, you get, you just, you know, it's like, but I, I love seeing, I love seeing citizens and I use that word strongly that like understand that you can't just check out and you've got to continue to give back. Like you're teaching, you know, Dan, you're teaching kids, you know, what, what's important. And, you know, it's like, um, and you guys are doing this podcast. And, and to me, that's, you guys are engaging in the fight still, because this is a lot. Of, I, I talked about culture a second ago. Politics is one vertical of culture. Um, and, and media is a big part of it too. And you guys are engaging in that. And because of your platforms and who you guys are and were, you know, people will li- tune in and listen for 30 seconds. What's yeah, what's, at least I mean, yeah. I always say that you only get a certain time to actually to hook them in, whether, whether exactly. they like you or they hate you or something like that. Exactly. That's where, uh, Don and I really don't have no future in politics because we're kind of like a couple of blunt, crusty old farts right there that, uh, you know, don't have... Uh, don't we're have like any. the old men in, in the uh, Muppet show, you know, the old men that sit yeah. up in the... Yeah. <laughs> well, it was funny because I went into... When I first started going down this uh, path, I went in... Uh, one of the first things I they had me do was go to D.C. so I could meet, like, people that are in leadership positions in politics. And uh, one of the... One of the top leaders in uh, on the Republican side of the house, he took one look at me and he's like, "Hey, you got to shave your you got to shave your beard," and he's Why? like, "Because he said it, you'll lose two to three percentage points because people in America, when they see you with facial hair, they see it as un you know you're hiding something." Oh. And I was just like looking at you guys and your mustaches. I'm like, <laughs> "Nah, you guys, your yeah. mustaches are too awesome to be in politics." You yeah, know? I and I don't shaving. think you guys are shaving. Them, so. <laughs> I and I, I'm definitely not shaving either. So, well, we'll yeah. see what happens, but. Well, hell, that's that's the new look nowadays, right? It is, man. Everybody's it's, got a beard. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at uh, each year when it hits uh, November, aka Movember, when Mo- people are growing beards and mustaches. And that's right. For the, you know, first time or whatever. So that's right. That's right. So, you were deployed how many times? I I did five deployments. I did uh, three with SEAL Team Three. Because when I went through SEAL training the first time, I didn't make it through SEAL training. So I had to go out to the fleet for two and a half years. And uh, then I got the opportunity to come back and go through, but they call it BUDS, Basic Underwater right. Demolition SEAL. I came back, did it again. And uh, by that time, I had already done two deployments in what we call the fleet. So I was on a Aegis missile cruiser. Both of my cruises were uh, post 9-11. One was a, a Gulf, what we call a Gulf cruise um, which was right there in the Persian Gulf. And we had a bunch of uh, Tomahawk missiles on our ship. So, you know, we were standing by ready to, you know, fire those off if needed. And then um, came back and then I did, went through SEAL training and then I went to uh, SEAL Team 3 and I deployed to Iraq three times in 06, 08, and 2010. How many, how many months was you deployed? Um, the first one was a quick one because I joined uh, – the platoon that I ended up in, I joined them halfway. They were already there by the time I graduated. So I was just a brand new guy that right. showed up to, you know, help any way I could. So that was a three monther. And then the other two, the other two following that were six months. Mm-hmm. Yep. How'd they treat you when you got there first time? You know, the first time was actually pretty decent. And most of that just depends on uh, the group that you're with. Cause it's usually the group that you're with is between 20 and 40 guys. That group was pretty uh, pretty good. As long as you didn't screw up, you know they they didn't mess with you too much. You had all you did all the you did all the shitty jobs, right? The new right. guy jobs. Um, and then uh, the second platoon 
was we got treated like crap. Uh, if that you guys have seen that movie American Sniper with Chris Kyle, have you yeah. seen that? Right. So Chris was my boss from 2006 to 2008. So when I was working for him, we we paid the man. You know, yeah. we we took heavies, but you know it is it is what it is. I mean, uh, I definitely see some. You know, anytime anytime you're in an environment like that there's definitely uh pros and cons to it but you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right now let me i'm gonna jump way off way off here man Uh oh i saw your wife your wife's fucking beautiful now um when i saw (laughs) o'neill yeah his his wife's gorgeous yeah now, you got these groupies. You, you have groupies that follow, you know. I mean, well, how, how do you guys, how do you guys <laughs> yeah. look at you for God's sake? I know, look how at you, dude. I mean, you pull a woman like I, de- I definitely, <laughs> I know, dude, this guy. Whoa. Dude, hey, I, you know, you know, you know, you're not, I, I mean, married, man, I thought, married up. Married I thought up. we were friends, man. I, but. I got your back here on a bunch of things. You're already on this one. <laughs> no. Well, I think that, uh, it's probably a lot like fighters, yeah. you know, I think that, um, and you guys have a show called to- toxic masculinity, but I think that, um, there is something to be said for, you know, uh, guys that have confidence right. and that's one of, I know that, you know, just, I know that's one of the, you know, top things that a lot of, like a lot of women look for. And, and, and I, there's a lot of other things as well, but, um, I've noticed that I've noticed, you know, when when you're when you're in a high performance group like that, that tends to be how you know things play out. Well, you feed off of each other. I mean, would you would you with a whole group of a bid like that to be just to kind of feed off of each other? That I mean, that's the one thing I love about the military is just like uh, yeah. whatever is one one person's weakness is someone else's strength. That you have to you have to succeed as a unit. You right. know, so you're gonna help everyone rise up. And 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 you know, for, for me, you know, it's like uh, go. I think a lot of it is, you know, personal standard. Like I, I didn't, I didn't want to be a conventional, you know, a conventional soldier. I wanted to be the best of the best. I, I wanted to be a seal and, you know, I, I, I wanted to marry a beautiful girl. And it just so happens that my wife is, you know, my best friend and she's been, yeah, see, Dad, I don't look at that as a really lofty goal. I think most men would like to marry. Yeah, a absolutely. Girl. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah but they're, they're, not they're, most men are able to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Now my wife is she's awesome, man. She uh, like I said, um, we have a we have a ninety five percent divorce rate in the SEAL teams, and so the fact that you know wow. we, we you know we did uh, um, you know three deployments together. You know, and uh, I thought professional wrestling was bad for for the odds because I've been mean, on the road so much. It's kind of right. like very just tend to take the professional wrestling, but I think ninety five is actually worse, yeah, worse yet. Yeah, Oof. yeah, and you know, it is it is what it is. But I definitely feel blessed, and that's what I was saying too. That this is one of the reasons I feel like I can actually even do something like this, run for Congress, because my wife is so so strong, and we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot together, and you know, uh, I, I know a lot of. I think there's, you know, I think there, I know, I know several men in the community that I, that I think would be phenomenal politicians, phenomenal congressmen. Um, but well, you thank know, you. I appreciate it. But, and Don, Don, clearly I was talking about Don, but, yeah. um, but they're, they're not in a place in their life or maybe in their marriage where they can, where they can do it. And so, um, you know, it, it I am. And so we're going to give it a shot and see, see what happens. But, That's great, man. Yeah. It's the American way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm humbled in your presence, and I'm ashamed in your presence because, you know, 2001, I was thinking about myself and my family, and you yep. know how I can I can compete more and make more money. You know, yep. and you you did what I should have done. My biggest shame is never serving in the military. You know. Yeah, actually, Don and I have talked about a couple yeah. of times because you know it'd be as much you know, we get you know get this uh, uh, podcast talk called Toxic Masculinity stuff like that, and I, even before we even went on air, I, I, I was telling you before that a lot of people think I'm military or uh, law enforcement background because I got that Dougie do I chin, have the mustache, and the way I'm, I'm organized and structured and stuff like that. But it's kind of like, oh, no, I, I'm born raised on a farm. And uh, there were certain days that uh, you just knew that there's a format that you got to take care of your animals, stuff like that, before you got taken care of. And you've got better do that before you jump on the bus. So 
But uh, I mean, I actually was looking at uh, in high school, upon high school graduation, how am I going to go to go to college? I kept thinking, well, a couple of my fellow teammates they had older siblings that upon high school graduation they went into the military. Yep. And then came out and then went to college on the GI Bill. So my first thought is, this is what I'll do. But by my by my sophomore year, it's like going, I got some college coaches going, like, let's look at option number two. Can we get a possibly get a scholarship out of this in the process? So that's again, like Don said, I, I think that that's something that literally almost all Americans really should do upon high school graduation for at least one to two years. They should go in there to understand. That's all part of that that constitution to understand. Uh, you know, Amer- America's freedom is not free. Yeah, I think this would be a much different country if that oh. was the case. Hand, not even a question. Hands down. Uh, the 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 downside to it is, you know. And I think the uh, we saw this during Vietnam when we had a draft. Is when the downside to that is is that you get people in there that have an attitude because they they don't want to be there. Right. And so it's a there's a double edged sword that comes along with it. When you have an all volunteer force, you can tell guys, hey, you chose to be here. I don't want to hear it. Right. Lock it up. Go do your job. You chose to be here. So I, you know, there's I think there's pros and cons, but I think America much better as a whole if that was the case well you end up training uh the bloods and the crips you know and and gangsters you that, know? that's another yeah that's another th- that's another downside to yeah. do that yeah you teach them how to handle guns hey quinn we're trying to have a podcast <laughs> over here <laughs> hey, <I> Lord. <laughs> that's what i love yeah. about bulldog for, for, for for being a lady uh, <laughs> yeah yes yeah, yes yeah, she, yeah, she got a quinn, few uh, dude. Yeah. oh my she, god she, she, she could store up a storm well, know. okay, let me ask you this here about, the, okay, our military is changing a lot. Yeah. With this new administration. Uh, people are leaving. Oh, people are uh, people are being fired. Yeah. What are, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? And then you, then you have them teaching, what, uh, critical race theory? In, yeah, in, you uh, do. Military, my right? little, my younger brother, I always say my little brother, he's not little anymore. He, uh... I want to say, I want to say he's like a major in the Marine Corps. Wow. Like he's a he's a reservist now, but he he was active. He went to the Naval Academy, then he was active duty for many years, and um, now he's an attorney down in t- t- in uh, New Orleans. Um, but he also he's still a reservist. He told me uh, several last year actually he. Um, his commander, somebody left, and so he had to assume the duties. And one of one of the, one of the jobs that he had to do while the commander or whatever was gone was he had to teach this garbage critical race theory. And just he had, he he just had to put out the curriculum. And he said the guy that got the most pissed off about it in in you know in that in their squadron was a black guy. Yeah, he he knew it was garbage, yeah. and it just you know um, it, that's what this is what happens when. You know, we have we have Marxists, leftists, and communists that have infiltrated every major institution that we have. Right. Um, Those are the it, fucking White House. It, yeah. yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's in academia now. It's in the military now. It's in the Department of Justice now. And it, I mean, it is a cancer. And this is why I think you know people are realizing that. Um, I think this is one of the reasons you're seeing so many veterans, r- you know, running to what I call the sound of political gunfire, just because we know that if we don't, if we don't jump into this mix quickly, it's going to be unrecognizable. And we will be, we will go the way of most empires that have just imploded from within. And, and I think that's what these folks want. And stay with me for a second, because here's the deal, guys, nobody is going to vote for a change from capitalism and freedom um, and the government and the constitution that we've had when things are going hunky dory, everything's great. Unemployment is down. GDP is up. You know, they have to create chaos. They have to create chaos, corruption. um, uh, And that's exactly what they've done. And if they can convince you that it's broken and that it was never good in the first place, it's a racist country. That's what you hear them say all the time. It's a racist you know, misogynistic country, then they can possibly convince folks to change it. And that's what ultimately what they want. They want to break it so that they can bring in something that this, 
you know, socialist, so, socialistic, tyrannical government and, and country that they've always wanted. And it's, it's unfortunate. And I know it's hard for people to even go there in their minds because, you know, most people don't believe, I, I don't think that most people realize how evil, so, you know, folks are and what they're capable right. of doing. But then again, they haven't, they haven't been on battlefields overseas. A lot of these kids are too young to really think about like the Holocaust or what men have done for power in, in, in the past. Well, that's, that's why I, I, my theory is that's why they waited till all the war, World War II vets were died off. And then now they're making the push. Yeah, yeah, I think they've been working on it for a long time, but I think that, to your point, Don, it might be one of the reasons they've been so successful because a lot of our, you know, my grandfather was in World War II, you know, and a lot of, you know, a lot of them wouldn't have, wouldn't have stood for this. Right. And when they were around, you know, they, at least they were voices of wisdom and discernment and they, you know, they could be watchmen on the wall telling us, don't do that. I've seen it before. Don't do that. This is where it leads. And now you have so, you have, I think I saw a study recently that 58% of kids coming out of college now think that socialism is a good idea. Right. That's yeah. a huge problem. Or do they even teach about the Holocaust anymore? I honestly, I, I don't know, but I, I know that, I know that my kids learn about that stuff, but then they go to a, a private Christian school. Right. And so not everybody, private not, schools, every, not everybody's getting that. totally different than that public school. No, so you're right. A way, you're, way, be, way better case, no, education. You, you're right. And that's what I, that's what I want for my kids, you know, and I, I feel, I feel bad that, you know, not every, not everybody gets that. Not every kid gets that because, um, you know, a lot of these kids are just getting indoctrinated and it's, you know, you see the product that comes out of it. We, we talked, again, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Eli, but uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I think we were actually off the air at the time. We talked about, you know, like vacationing. And I said that every state's got something beautiful uh, to, uh, to see about it. And, and I always say that every high school or, or college uh, student really should go to Washington, D.C. Yeah. Uh, I mean, each of my, my children have taken different uh, road trips from hell with dad. Right. Because I want them to understand what dad does is not all that easy to get up and drive, you know, for 40 some odd hours just to go to, into a place just to wash my face, run a razor my, my my face, then to switch up from driving clothes to teaching clothes and walk out on the mat, then teach for the next three, four hours, you know, right. and, 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 and then finally go crash out at a hotel. But all my kids have gone to Washington, D.C. with me. Yeah. Because I want them to see the various different monuments. They see it on TV all the time, but right. go there and see all the, some of these different cool museums. Yeah. And But then go over to Arlington Cemetery. And when you stand there and you, no matter what direction you look, and you see how uniform these crosses all are, but know that there's a body there. Yeah. And then you watch the changing of the guard, yeah. of the tomb of the unknown soldier. What a solemn occasion. Right. But then you go to the various memorials to where, of, of the Vietnam Memorial and then these other memorials that are there, that, that with one sweep of the hand across all this marble, how many, 50, how many thousand people just died? I think, from it was, that one I think sweep? Vietnam was fifty, but yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it, freedom when, is not when you free. get it when you get to see that it, it does it does make you know things hit home no, a little. And that's what good. I I I I'm here for to say that I'm, I'm big about education the right way, not the propaganda way, and that's why I don't like all the bullshit that people are spewing left to right. To me, it's like there's, there's, everyone's got to be accountable for what comes out of their mouth. Yeah. And we got so much bullshit that is coming out. You know, it's, I'll regale you with a story here. I, I think Mr. Fry heard this once before when I was a youngster. Oh, I, I you went remember with, it? <laughs> <laughs> way back then. No, that was my pet, my dinosaur, Dino, no. But, uh, I, I went with my father and my grandfather to an auction. Okay. And as we're at the auction, we're, we're, we're kind of walk around, see all these cool, you know, there's tractors and all this other kind of stuff. And basically, we come across, uh, I, I wasn't sure what the same was. Well, my, my father says, well, it's a manure spreader. <laughs> and my grandfather says, no, son, that's called the politician. <laughs> it just spews shit. Yep. And I go, I still remember that 
all these decades later that Grandpa, I mean, my, my grandfather was an uneducated man. I mean, he, when he, I remember going with him to the, the granary and where he could not read or write, he actually had to make his mark in the ledger. But right. the man had a genius of a mind that could put things together and things of that nature. And I always remember he wore his bib overhauls, had that pouch of red bad chew, and always had that chew in there. My father, Copenhagen, me, <laughs> neither one. <laughs> Were either of them uh, wrestlers? Uh, no, 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 because uh, wrestling did not. Uh, but my father was an athlete, a football player, a basketball player, but th- but his school did not have wrestling at you know at, at that time. Because even my father, I, I have four of the brothers, so the five of us went to college on full a- uh, full athletic scholarships. And my father was, you know, even when, when my older brother and I were, were doing well, he's like going, are, are, are these guys just that, that bad that you guys are pitted all these people? <laughs> and then my, my father's like going, he goes, you, you, he goes, he goes you, you, you keep doing this thing like a cradle stuff like that. He goes, show that to me. And then all of a sudden I, I start to show it, and I'm just starting to apply just a little bit. My dad, dad's like, get the hell off of me. He goes, hey, you're about to hurt me. He goes, I'll kick your ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Again, that, that's father. I'm like, oh, I'm not about to have the wrath of dad come down upon me. There you go. But there that was go. always, I always tell people that early in the morning, you know, we had a, we had a two story house, and, and uh, uh, all my siblings and I, we had different bedrooms upstairs. And uh, my father, we always we always knew the three of threes. The first time Dad yelled up the stairs, "We're okay, okay, Dad, yeah, we're we're up," and we just stick a fo- foot off the bed. There just enough to with the thump thump it a couple of times. Where it sounds like we're moving around. We're, we're still in bed. Dad <laughs> yells that second time, "Oh, you're moving! Never let him get the number three because you come up number three, he's gonna kick your ass." Right. There's there's reper there's, again, but there's repercussions. Yep. There's no repercussions yep. to people that they can get away and say anything they want. And that's I think what's wrong is you guys you guys will get a kick out of this. But my second to last job in the Navy was uh, I was in a shop called the NSW Naval Special Warfare RD Recruiting Directorate, and I was we didn't recruit you didn't recruit SEALs because if you have to talk somebody into that. It, they'll be gone right. so quick, but you, we did we did start trying to raise awareness around the country, and so that we could get more candidates, a better candidate to show up to training, and maybe bump the attrition numbers up. Um, but one one of the things that NSW did is they did a Gallup survey um, before I got to that shop, and and they spent like a you know they spent a good amount of money doing the survey, and they they just interviewed candidates who had made it candidates who didn't make it and they compiled all this data and their survey came to con- some conclusions that certain athletes were doing better in our training so they they found that uh water polo players were doing the best swimmers then wrestlers and then like seven there was seven sports that we targeted and so we started sending what we called uh, scouts nsw scouts all around the country and uh one like one of the things that I would do is I would go around the country and like I would go to a wrestling tournament, mm-hmm. and you know we would we wouldn't try and talk the kids into it. We'd be just like, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm a Navy SEAL. We'd show them a video. If they had time, we'd have them run a SEAL screen test, and then we'd give them a you know like a flyer, or and we'd just leave. And if they if they pursued it, then those you know then you know those were the type of candidates we wanted. But it was just interesting to me because I I never wrestled, but I remember going to a couple. Uh, wrestling tournaments. I went to one in Minnesota. What was the Minnesota's coach name? What was his name? Jay Robinson. Was yeah, I went to Jay camp. Robinson's yeah. the wrestling camp. Man, those kids were getting oh, after wow. it. You boy. went to a Jay Robinson camp? I did. Yeah, I mean, yeah Jay they, used to be a sister as a coach at Iowa University with Dad Gable and Dad went, to, went out to Minnesota. Yeah, but I just, I found it fascinating, you know, because I know that was where you guys came from and uh, watching those kids just, man, they, they were just beating the snot out of each other. Like, it was, it was regimented and it made total sense why a lot of wrestlers were doing well in does, SEAL training. Does Navy, uh, the, uh, the, through the SEAL training, but do they, like, like Army has, like, an ROTC program that they, they do through, is it through high schools? Uh, 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 college. Uh, oh, yeah. col- college yep. level. D- does, uh, does the Navy have the same date? So ROTC is kind of like a, it's a feeder. Like, if you go to college, you can go to our ROTC program, and uh, you can get your degree and also start working towards, um, you know, get going into the military as an officer. So you can do that ROTC for the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, oh, okay. Air Force. Yeah. All right. 
obviously you could tell I was not involved in that as well. No, I can okay. tell. Yeah. yeah. Same thing when you if you go to um, fuck. Uh, oh God! Oh, now I'm going to kick my head. God dang it! It's one of those senior moments here, right yeah, now. You know, yeah, if yeah. he would have just taken that guy down instead of just absorbing, yeah. I know. <laughs> that, that, that's called Takiyama. There, Takiyama. Right yeah. The Takiyama moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Takiyama moment right there, dude. <laughs> Now what, what's what's the army? What's the army um, college? West Point. Yep. Now you can go to West Point and graduate and go into any any branch you want, right? I don't think so. I, you might be able to. I know in the Naval Academy because Marines are part of the Navy. You can go Marine or. Okay. My little brother actually graduated from the Naval Academy and became a Marine officer, and then okay. flew helos for the Marine Corps. So. Uh, I think you can do some lateral transfers. I'm not sure how hard it is to do it, but I, I think it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Medics. Okay. I had it all bounced around. Never mind. <laughs> Pretend <laughs> I didn't say that. Cut that whole thing from the- <laughs> Right. All right, Dan, go ahead and fuck it up some more. Well, no, no, let's, let's go right back again because I, I mm-hmm. several times show it through the course of this broadcast. I want to get people, if they want to support you, especially Arizona residents that have the ability to vote for you, yep. stuff like that. I want them to find out more information about you. Where could they? No, they, they can vote for you anywhere in the state, right? Nope, they can't. No. So only, uh, we just had a redistricting cycle. So only people in uh, what's called CD2, Congressional District 2, can vote for me. So um that's that right. they, yeah but if they want to if they want to go learn more about me they can go to eli for arizona.com they can see our you know our campaign and you know learn what they want to learn about the campaign and me and my policy positions and all of that stuff okay great well i mean how much of aggressively do you have to go out and be at all these different places within your in that, that greater community i mean did you have to go someplace practically every day or every uh, every weekend or yeah it's i would say it's probably three to four events a week like yesterday i was up in pace in arizona and so that's you part know, of your district then? yep i was doing yeah this is a it's it's the biggest district in the country it's huge guys it's yeah, almost we, we talked about pace earlier. it's almost 55 yeah. percent of the state i believe it's it's wow. and it's mostly rural rural areas but it's a you know it's a it's a real big district i'm on the road a lot and a lot of it too depends on how hard do you want to hustle like anything else like how you know what can you get to because i still have kids i still have a business you know but you know we 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 try and we're trying to put our best foot forward and really well, thanks, thanks for your time here yeah buddy. no that, no that, no really absolutely great. i was i was grateful man well even uh, the, even the last two years though the last two years because of covid and that it's it showed you how important Zoom meetings are, and that, that you can address a lot more people through Zoom. Do you do, do you do a lot of Zoom meetings on top of that? Um, we've done we've done like uh, we've done one Zoom call uh, with you know just supporters and stuff like that. But a lot of what we've done is face to face, and then um, you know just getting out to events. Typically, when uh, you know Republican groups get together, a lot of times they'll invite a speaker or a candidate to come. We'll, we'll, we go to those all the time, and. Sometimes they'll give you 10 minutes to talk about your campaign, what you're all about, what your history is and stuff like that. So, you know, we're, we're doing everything that we can to get our, our name out there so that when people show up to the ballot box, they know who Eli Crane is and maybe they'll cast a vote for us. Now, when you, they donate, that does it have to be a check? Could it be cash? Could it be help? So, yeah, the uh, checks, because there's a lot of campaign finance law, so they want right. to be able to trace the money. So it's got to be either a check um, or the easiest way to do it is actually uh, you can do it online. So that's the easiest way to do it. I know a lot of people are skeptical of the, you know, online payment and stuff, but, you know, that that money does come to us and if you go to our website. And so, you know, that's – and it it's unfortunate, Dan, you were talking about this a second ago, that, that it is such a big a big deal, but in a – especially in a geographical district the size that we have – the only way for I can go it to as many meetings as I want, but at the end of the day, it's all it's going to come down to me being able to raise the money so that I can run the television ads, run the digital ads, run send out mailers to people's mailbox so that they show up to you know a, a polling site and actually know who Eli Crane is, what his platform is, and why I might vote for him. And so it is expensive to do all that stuff, and so that's you know that's why candidates are always trying to fundraise yeah no i get that's why i i I get it i just i just wish i know 
I understand. Yeah, term limits, but that ceilings, because I, I just look at the, the gross millions and millions of dollars that are wasted. Yeah, and it, it is too. It's it's because of this because of the system. You know, it does oftentimes. Um, it's it's not always a fair playing field. You could have a candidate that's actually a better candidate that you know ha, you know has but people just don't know about policies him because he's not, closer to you. You know where you're at, and you're not going to know about him because he can't get out there and you know. And I've heard other people complain about it and say, "Hey, it boils down to a popularity contest." I think there is something to be said for that. And some truth in that. I'm just playing the game in front of me. I know what I know what the rules are. I know know what I have to do, and I'm just gonna try and play the game the best I can, so that at the end of the day, I can get it, get a seat, get a vote, make a difference, and hopefully help turn this thing back around. All right, so you're America first. Yes, sir. All right, give us your top five um, positions since we're running out of time here. Right. So. Um, First of all, please. Please. like I said, ele- election and well, Navy SEAL, huh? election and <laughs> election integrity is n- my number one thing because I just see that as I look at this is what kills us first. If we don't get our election straightened out, to me, we the people will never elect our candidates ever again because unfortunately, there is the intent out there. There are people that care so much; they're they're, they're willing to do anything for power. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll you right there. Okay, you, you said that lie there several times. We the people. That is the very first line of the American Constitution. Yep, and that's why I, could, I want I want our listeners to understand that that uh, that it, it's not us and y'all's. It's no. It starts off we the people. Yeah, and, and so, a lot of people don't understand that. Right. No, it didn't. And like I said, it, it does boil down to you know who has the power. Is it is it still us? Do we still get a rep? Do we still have representatives that we elect or are our uh, elections so canned and in the tank and so corrupted that, you know, um, we no longer get to elect our elected officials? So that's number one. The border is number two. I think if we don't shore up that southern border and we don't have, you know, borders, not only do you have terrorism coming over that southern border, you have crime, you have gang members coming over that southern border, you have sex trafficking coming over that southern border, um, and it's just it's just atrocious. Every country in the world so. deserves to be able to have its own sovereignty. The United States of America is no different. So right. I would say that's number two. Then fiscal responsibility is number three on my list, and just um, and that's why I think it's important, like we mentioned, to send business owners to Washington because – we can't just print money. Mm-hmm. You know, we're used to having to uh, spend the money that we have and uh, are clearly Washington and our congressmen and women, our senators, and even the executive branch, you know, have no fiscal responsibility. There's no accountability. Um, and that's why we're over $30 trillion in debt. And that just keeps ticking higher and higher and higher with no plan to yeah, no yeah, plan so to just pay just, for it at all it just rate low just going to keep it take it escalate it out of out of reach yeah no ab- absolutely and then i'm also you know i'm i'm pretty big on china i think that a lot of people have been sleeping on china i think we need to be very uh tough on china um and i also think that we need to i, I love what president trump was doing uh being tough with china and leveling tariffs even though that has you know, it definitely, there's good things to it. There's also some tough things about it and that it does affect our economy. Sometimes it does affect some business owners. I was one of them. We got, we got hit with one of our products, um, when tariffs started being applied. But if you don't, if, if we don't have, um, there's a difference between free trade and fair trade. And we, we have, I want to have free trade with people, but the trade needs to be fair. We can't be having these deficits with other countries in trade of like 400 million, you know, $400 million annually. We have to make sure that not only do we have free trade, but the trade needs to be fair as well. And so, you know, that's, those are a couple of the key issues that, you know, I want to work on. I also want to do anything and everything I can to keep this radical leftist, communist, Marxist agenda, um, you know, away from our kids, academia, and our other big institutions. Um, how we go about doing that, we're going to have to be creative. Um, but, you know, those are definitely some of the things that I'm, I'm most fired up about and want to want to address if I get the opportunity. All right, now, you get elected. How often will you come back to Arizona? 
So you, I'll co- I'll be coming back almost almost every weekend because this is where my family will right, be. Right. And you know, part of being a congressman is you you represent in Washington D.C., but you still got to go around. I'm going to have to be traveling around the biggest Senior district peeps, in the country. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to be here all the time. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Hands on. Yeah. All righty. You want to close? You want anything I, else? No, you, sir. I'm you good. Hit? I'm good, right. man. One last time about your website or for how people get uh, the old. Yep. It's just EliForArizona.com if you guys want to come check it out. And uh, we, we appreciate it. But I appreciate you guys and just uh, entertaining Eli. me when I was a kid and, you know, also <laughs> encouraging me to go do something, go do something awesome. I think you it's fantastic. And I'm going to say this too. And I, because you guys, if you don't hear it enough, I want you to hear it from me. I appreciate the fact that you guys are still engaged. I, I've said it once. I wanted to say it again. Too many guys like you that others look up to check out. They just check out. And it's all about me, 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 my, my life, my retirement. You know, I've done my time. But the, we need, we need el, you know, older guys that have been there, done that, that people look up to that don't check out and continue to impart wisdom and experience to the rest of us. You said something earlier. Uh, I mean, I think Don asked you a question there, and it came out to what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah, legacy. All right, so you get your, your legacy. So that's where we're just trying to make a difference. Yep. Our whole thing is to you know, make people think and make it a difference, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's uh, yeah, like the teaching thing. I enjoy doing the teaching thing. And I've been involved in a lot of kinds of different sectors, but it's all boils down to being able to connect with people no matter what the subject matter is, but uh, making that difference. And that's what we're trying to do here on this podcast. Because when people first were hearing that, you know, that Don and I are doing a podcast, they think we're just going to talk about the fighting game. Oh, I'm sure, we'll, we'll talk about certain aspects of it, but it's kind of like going, we're two true Americans. Yeah. And we used to be, you know, we've seen what has changed already in, in our lifetimes right now. And some stuff for the good, a lot of stuff not for the good. So we're just trying to make people aware. But then, you know, there's all kinds of other aspects that we want to bring into it. We don't want to be known as a, a one-trick pony just only in this one industry. You know, be a little bit of a, of a variety show. We'll get to <laughs> uh, <laughs> do a lot of different things. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're big time about being... Americans and being all about America because yeah. this is the greatest country in the world. Yeah, and I hear you. Well, this sure as hell isn't a beauty contest going on. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? You hear Can no, you play that Quinn? I wasn't it's talking funny. about Quinn, man. I wasn't okay. talking about Quinn. Right, <laughs> Not the beautiful Quinn. Over there. All right. Well, I think that concludes another episode of Toxic Masculinity. Hope, hopefully, you were entertained. If some of you thought that we stepped over the line, well, too bad. That is our prerogative. And, uh, you know, some of you just need to put on your man pants. <laughs> and uh, maybe you just, uh, you know, uh, have to deal with the, the, the two two guys here that simply identified as uh, uh, old white men that uh, identify as true Americans with the can-do spirit. That's you right. know, so, and there you have it. Ta-da. Ta-da. Thank, Thank you, 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 sir. Thank, Thank you. you, fellas. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.